Europe did something very radical when the coronavirus hit. They focused on stopping the virus as a way to, to make sure that the economy didn't fall off a cliff. How did they do it? The government just paid payrolls for companies. There wasn't mass unemployment. The government just stepped in. They printed the money, however Europe prints the money, and they backstopped the payrolls. So on one end, they could focus exclusively on the virus, that tyranny that Italy did, locking down the country for three weeks to a month, which definitely brought down the virus. I think now in all of Italy, I've seen the other day, maybe like 150 cases, way, 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 way down. Europe took care of its citizens, and as a result, the virus is significantly, they're not, you know, setting records every day four months into this like the United Corporations of America is. Unlike Europe, we did something a little different. So basically, here, we did a patchwork bunch of temporary measures. We sent out $1,200 checks, which not everybody even got which people spent in 10 seconds to basically stop drowning. So the $1,200 was like a Band-Aid for a gunshot wound. And then expansion of unemployment, $600 a week, actually a good measure, which should have been, in, been not set for expired ex expiration. It should have just been a replenishable so if you're making the $600 a week on unemployment, plus whatever your unemployment already was, it should have just been a, a replenishable uh, measurement until the virus was gone. No expiration until medical experts and uh, government could agree it is safe to go back. But no, it was set for an expiration, coincidentally in an election year. And... Again, those $1,200 checks, long gone. The $600 unemployment expansion saved a lot of people's hides, has kept people afloat. I have interviewed many of them around the country, thanks to you. July 26th, the unemployment rate expires. Excuse me, the unemployment expansion of that $600 extra a week, if you've been lucky enough to get it, gone, expires. Uh, I don't know, for the last several weeks... It's been apparent that the cases are getting worse in Arizona, in Florida, in Texas, now in Louisiana, Louisville after I left, skyrocket, uh, Kentucky after I left, skyrocketed. By the way, I just got my latest COVID test. You don't know this, but every time I travel, I come back and I have to take a COVID test because obviously I don't want to get uh, my girlfriend sick. So I went to get a COVID test. There's a huge backlog. So it took a week just to get the results. Uh, but I was negative, knock on wood. Um, so amid all this expiration, if you have that expanded 600 hours, it expires in nine days. If you had that $1,200 check, it ain't looking like you're getting another $1,200 check. Moratoriums on evictions in many states are beginning to uh, expire now. Today, another 1.3 million workers filed for unemployment. Now, 51 million have filed for unemployment. By the way, I don't believe the numbers that have been put out. Some bullshit study that only 5.6 million workers have lost their health care. Uh, 51 million jobless claims. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. Might not be 51 million have lost their health care. But I'm going to put it closer to 30 to 40 million have lost their health care. Because if you think unemployment offices are overrun on the state level trying to fill claims, go try to get on Medicaid right now. I just spoke with a friend. Can't even get a human being on the phone. So 51 million people have filed for unemployment, right? Estimated 30 to 40 million people have lost their health care. Thank you, Pete Buttigieg, for the sacred choice of Medicare for all, all you want. California, now on essentially 
Lockdown again, everything shut down. All of this, again, think about it. If, if you've lost your job, there's not a lot of jobs open right now. People are just rummaging for jobs. There are no jobs. Even if there were, a lot of businesses are just wait, a lot of businesses haven't even been able to float on the PPP loan. So all of this happening in a normal country, you would have Congress or uh, Parliament or whatever in there yesterday taking immediate action. But we don't live in a country. We live in the United Corporations of America. And right now, the Senate's on recess. Yeah, nine days until millions of Americans have their unemployment insurance expire. And the crazy part about this, uh, Dave Dayan over at American Prospect put it well. So Jeff Stein who's a pretty decent economics reporter at Washington Post, wrote, never say never, but at this point, I think it's basically impossible to imagine Congress signing a bill into law before enhanced unemployment benefits expire in nine days. Some, t- some talk they could backdate a benefit increase, but I'm sure, I'm unsure exactly how that would work. And Dave pointed out, uh, it's going to expire. McConnell is talking about, quote, the next three weeks and an August 7th deadline for a bill. The benefits are done July 25th or 26th. was hard enough for state unemployment systems to spin up the federal enhancement. Now spinning it down and then back up again. And he also brings up this great point. And what does this mean for people with claims in limbo where they will eventually get processed And the state unemployment system will have to factor in, A, weeks with 600, B, weeks with nothing, and C, weeks with some other figure less than $600. Yep. Uh, Let me translate that for you. If Mitch McConnell is all of this, uh, Donald Trump going around taking photo ops with Goya beans, as well as his daughter, uh, Joe Biden... I don't know what he's doing. He's coming out and making Build Back America proposals. Uh, He's not sounding the alarm that I have seen. He's just bashing Trump, bashing Trump, which is the easiest thing to do right now. But is he calling for some type of consistent, permanent solution until this is up? Because the, pro- the bottom line is, you can't keep doing short-term extensions of things during a pandemic that is not a short-term thing. I'm sorry, folks, but this thing is not short-term. We're not on the second wave. We never left the first wave. It could have been short-term if our government would have had its shit together. But let's also not pretend here, I hate to say it, President Trump deserves a whole lot of, cr- lot, whole lot of fault. The most fault. The, the buck stops with him. But, you know, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who Rachel Maddow, CNN, elevated to, you know, patron St. Jesus, he acted too, too slowly. He did not shut down the New York City subway system, the New York City bus system. He did not shut down the city or the state. And you, particularly New York City, where you have many, many, many people from Europe, Asia coming in at all times, and New York was the epicenter of this. Other governors have been even worse. Looking at you, Ron DeSantis in Florida. You, uh, Doug, forgot his last name in Arizona. Greg Abbott in Texas. Brian Kemp, who should be in jail for stealing the election, but, you know, now... What happened to Republicans hating big government? Now Brian Kemp steps in in Georgia, overrules counties and towns who are putting mask mask mandates that you have to wear a mask in public. He overrules that. I thought Republicans don't like big government. I guess when they could keep perpetuate the culture war, they like big government. KTGR, did anyone say what the 20th was? Again, July 26th the expiration of the expanded $600 a week unemployment. Nine days, the expanded $600 unemployment is up. So 
again, you got Trump going around doing photo ops with Goya beans. He fired his campaign manager. We'll talk about that later. Biden basically coming out of the basement once every couple days, but he ain't proposing anything. By the way, we're not even getting into the problems on the state level. I was just in Kentucky covering uh, the fight for justice for Breonna Taylor. They're telling Kentucky folks, hey, if you can't get your unemployment that you're eligible for, you know, yeah, you, you can meet somebody in person at the end of August. You'll be able to meet somebody in person to get you your unemployment. That's just Kentucky. I've heard horror stories in other states, too. People trying to get human beings on the phone or meet somebody in person. All of this going on as they gave corporate America a four to six trillion dollar. I mean, what do you call it? Sexual favor? That first bailout? Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.